Hey, what's up, folks? This here, this is Tim here with uh, testemi.com. I just want to do a quick video because I've been getting a lot of questions in my email. I just responded to one in my inbox here about a lot of people that are new to quality assurance and new to software testing, and they're looking for uh, some advice on, on how to actually land a position when you have no experience. So that's what this quick video is going to be for. I'm going to share some tips. So take some notes, and I'm going to share a link below that's going to help you elevate your QA game and help you get a position, right? So basically what I've been getting is a lot of people saying, look, how do I get a position? A lot of companies are looking for five years or more in order to get in the door in uh, software testing. So here's what I'm going to share with you. The first thing you want to do is one particular uh, tip or suggestion you want to consider is try to get in the door through the back door, right? So you know, just like you have a house, right? A lot of people come through the front door, but the people that you maybe have some kind of experience or, or have some kind of... Um, Savvy to them might come through the back door. So what do I mean? What I mean here is, you know, you might want a QA position, but you don't have the experience to get in because they look for five, 10 years. That's okay. What you want to do is you might want to consider one of my client students actually did this. She's actually working on this uh, particular strategy right now. It was not my suggestion. She did it, but it's something I've always um, know. I know people that do it. Right. So what you do is they look for a QA position, but maybe the company has other positions that you have experience, maybe in sales or in marketing or in business or whatever it is, in documentation, but you have that experience or an admin, right? So one great thing you might consider is actually getting in that position or getting in that company through the other position. And once you're in, now you're in the door. So the criteria is not as hard. So once you're in the door, you know who the movers and shakers are. You know who the hiring managers in QA. You know who the recruiters are in quality assurance. You know who the software testing uh, team lead is and the uh, people on, on the software quality assurance team. And what you can do is now take them out to lunch. Get to know them. Get to know what they do on a daily basis. Begin to build that report. Build that experience, right? And once you do all that, you begin to know when the positions are open and you'll be the first in line. Right. And so this is great. This is a great strategy to employ with small size company or mid sized companies because some larger companies might have a criteria that say you have to be there for at least a year. Some might not, but it doesn't matter. But even if you did have to be there for a year, you got to think long term, right? So even if you got to go there and sacrifice for a year and build that experience, build that knowledge and begin to build the relationship with the people in the QA department and begin to improve your skills. So when you get in, you might even volunteer with them for free and do some work, stay late, work with them. And boom, you're in the door, right? So that's one great way. Um, get into the back door through another position. The other thing you might want to consider is you might want to consider um, uh, positions, uh, um, pardon me here, places like Upwork.com and places like Fiverr.com, right? What you might want to do on there, go on there and say, hey, you're a QA person and you can do a job. And once you get a position as a QA and what they do on Upwork and Fiverr, you can you know upload that you're a consultant or um you do freelance work, basically, and just say, look, you have the experience. I mean, I, don't lie. When I mean experience, you I mean you've taken a course, you've taken my course, or you've taken some course, or you Google stuff, and that's experience to an extent. But when you, if you do land a position, you know, I'm not saying lie. Definitely don't do that, right? But if you get the position, go figure it out. Reach out to me. Reach out to other people. There are a lot of blogs out there, and begin to figure it out. And once you figure it out, it will put pressure on you to know how to do things, Right? Don't tell them you don't have experience. Just say, yeah, I can do it. And you can do it because I believe in you. You can do it. So Upwork.com, Fiverr.com, sign up as a consultant. Sign up as a freelance. Get the whatever position you can. Get that experience in your resume. All right? Let's see what else here uh, I, I, I put in the res email to this uh, young person I helped. Um, let's see. Another thing is on the course we have, uh, and I'll talk about the course later, we have running a special is... I talk about different platform or websites you can go and you can actually do projects for like the NBA.com. I've done it for like Microsoft and Oracle and all these big companies. You can actually put that on your resume now. Now, you're not going to put the experience, but you can put the company name just to catch the recruiter's attention. But you're going to list on your resume the projects, not in chronological order, but project based. You're going to have a project based resume. You're not going to put the time because the time is working against you. That's a weakness, but a strength you do have. You have these companies you can put on there, and you can have project, almost, projects of almost two pages of projects that you've actually worked on, right? Through these platforms and these websites, which I recommend I put in the course. I'll put the link below. You can actually put that on your resume. And that's one way to stand out. I've already talked about Fiverr and Upwork.com, uh, but these are these are different ways you can do, right? Like I said, the final, the other thing you can do is you can go do um, volunteer, go Google, right? Free um, QA volunteer, so you can go volunteer for free. That shows passion, it shows initiative to the QA department, to the hiring manager, to the recruiter. And one, I remember one time there was uh, there were Mozilla Firefox were looking for QA uh, people to test part of their um, 
one of their rollouts they had. Of course, you're looking for third party or open source project, right? They needed people to volunteer. You were part of the team and you were part of QA meetings and they brought you into the systems they use and the software and the technology and you'd be able to learn the lingo. You had to have meetings with them every Monday and things like, things like that. But this is a great way to have real world hands-on experience, right? So that's what I want you to do. Go Google now. Go Google right now. Pause the video. Google free QA third party um, volunteer projects. I can Google and I'm sure you find several. Volunteer, sign up, be a part of it, right? But again, the course I have on software testing with no experience, we talk about projects. I actually give you projects you can actually do today. Put it on your resume, right? So finally, like I said, I'm running a special, right? That's why I'm hyped. I'm running a special right now for only 17 bucks. For anyone that's experienced, I mean, this is two days worth of Starbucks. It can be like eight bucks for Starbucks. That's two days, right? Imagine you get a job 40 bucks an hour, 50, 60 bucks an hour. My first job was 50 bucks an hour, right? 50 bucks an hour, you're making 80,000 a year, 60,000 a year, 50. You only spend 17 bucks. Again, we're only going to run this special for a few days. And after that, it's going to be back to 97 or 197 or possibly 297. Now, the course is, uh, I'm going to leave the link below. It's, it's testdemi.teachable.com. We're going to teach you about my check checkmate technique. It's a particular strategy I use to help me prepare for any QA interview. I'm li literally reading it. And it's helped me land positions with top five, Fortune 500 companies. And how you can actually combine this strategy with an effective QA profile on these different platforms and websites to increase substantially your chances of getting hired as a QA engineer. And also, I'm going to show you five simple ways you can quickly get QA hands-on experience, which I kind of talked about today. I'm going to give you some more hands-on practical websites and platforms you can begin to go to today. They put on your resume to help you get started, right? So click the link below, testdemi.teachable.com. Only 17 bucks. You know, you spend it at the movie for you and a friend or a date, right? Even for Netflix, it's 14 bucks. My counsel on Netflix, get this because it's going to give you some knowledge that's going to help you get a job that you can buy stock in Netflix and you can take your game to the next level. I'm just hyped for you, man. So really though, um, click the link. It's only 17 bucks. I'm running the specials. I'm going to give you a lot of game, a lot of knowledge to take your QA uh, game to the next level. If you have no experience, this is for you. If you have mid uh, experience or some experience, this is for you. If you have a lot of experience, you have a lot of knowledge, this is for you because they're going to talk about rates, different techniques, how to talk about projects, how to convince the recruiter that you are the man or the woman for the job because I know you will have confidence in you. I believe in you. I have faith in you. So go get it. Be a go-getter. Hit me up. Send me an email if you have any questions. And uh, see you guys on the other side because I believe you. Let's get it. Click the link below. Run it special for only a few days. And it's going to be gone. So see you guys on the other side. Peace. This is Tim. TestDebbie.com.